Hi friends, I'm Golda Rose and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, first off, I just want to thank you guys for continuing to support my channel. I really enjoy seeing all of your comments and interacting with each of you. Now in today's video, I want us to talk about why I think more people should go into engineering and how to know if engineering is right for you. But before I jump into that, I just want to remind you guys to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe because I do post videos every single week. Have you ever looked at something and wondered how it was made? Maybe a car, a building, or even the device you're using to watch this video. Well, engineers are a vital part of creating those things. Now, if you're already thinking, well, Gold, I'm not really good at math, just hang on a little bit. I'll be getting into that shortly. Technology is constantly advancing and changing, and we need people to adapt to those changes in different environments. With an engineering background, not even the sky is the limit. It sounds funny, but think about it. Every single space exploration mission has involved an engineering team. Calculations that are done for space missions are done by mathematicians and engineers, and then after that, they're simulated using computers and advanced software. So when you think about it, the phone you're using, engineers. The home or apartment building you live in, engineers. So your internet, your phone connection, your home appliances, engineers. Literally everything around us involves some type of engineering or STEM field to create it. So for those of you earlier who was saying, well, Golda, I'm not really good at math. Here's what I have to say to you. Drum roll. I've been there. <laughs> Surprising as it is, I wasn't good at math in high school. I barely passed pre-calculus, and if I'm being honest, it took me a while to really get like good at math. And the summer before I started college, I actually had to take a remedial summer class for basic math. As embarrassing as it is, that's my truth, and I just wanna be honest with you guys. I believe that a person can be good at anything when they put their mind to it. Is it gonna be easy? No. But that's how it's gonna be for any field you go into. Not everything is gonna be easy. You have to work hard and as funny as it sounds, practice makes perfect. There are a few steps you can take to becoming good at math and these are steps that I've personally taken myself. So one would be practicing, kind of like I mentioned before, practice makes perfect. That could be rewriting your notes, watching videos on YouTube or other platforms like Khan Academy, doing extra problems in your book, or even just reaching out to your peers and professors asking for their help. Doing all of those steps will really help solidify your understanding of the concepts that you may be struggling with. Number two is, like I mentioned, reach out to your peers, reach out to your professors. I mean, there's a reason why professors have office hours. They want you to come in and ask questions. I would even suggest looking for a tutor. Now, personally, at Cal State Fullerton, they offered free tutoring in the library. So I would definitely check out to see if your school offers, you know, free resources like that. Nowadays, you might have to have like a virtual tutor, but I think it's still effective. So I'd really encourage you guys to kind of look for those resources and check them out. Another thing that Cal State Fullerton offered was SI classes, which stands for Supplemental Instruction. And for that, you would have a one unit course typically right after your math class and then it would be taught by another student who had already passed that class. And you would do extra problems and get help on areas that you're struggling with. And number three, don't be scared to ask a question. There is no stupid question. I know sometimes people might be a little shy to ask a question because, well, what if everyone else knows it? Don't worry about that. You should be focused on your understanding. And you know, someone in the class may also have that question and you could be the way that they figure it out. Now for me personally, I did have to work hard in college and if I could offer you guys one piece of advice, I would just say that working hard is worth it. When you look back and see how far you come, and that's really with anything in life, you're gonna feel good and you're gonna feel empowered. So moving on to the curriculum, specifically for a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and just an engineering background in general, these are the list of classes that you guys can expect to take. So general classes that you can expect to take as an engineering major include various levels of calculus, differential equations, chemistry, physics, as well as statics, dynamics, and of course labs come with certain courses. Now for me personally, I was majoring in mechanical engineering with a minor in physics at Cal State Fullerton. So I had a mix of all of the mechanical engineering courses as well as some additional physics courses. I'm gonna focus on Cal State Fullerton specifically because that's what I have knowledge of. Now typically most universities will have the same kind of course structure, just the titles might be different. And of course, if you're going into electrical engineering or civil engineering, you're going to be taking some different courses. I'll go ahead and leave links in the description box so you guys can go check out the individual courses and different majors at Cal State Fullerton. And keep in mind, you can definitely go look at other universities as well. This is just what I know personally. I'd also like to mention that Cal State Fullerton is a university in the United States. So depending on what country you're in and what country you're doing your degree program in, that can very well be different. So alongside those engineering fundamentals, I had to take heat transfer, fluid mechanics, engineering, engineering economics and professionalism, circuits, energy and power, 
Engineering Graphics, where we learned AutoCAD and SOLIDWORKS, Digital Computation, where we learned MATLAB, and we also had to choose three technical electives and complete a senior design project. And don't forget, like I mentioned, some of these courses did have lab components, so that was an additional class outside of your normal lecture. Now, in terms of the technical electives, I really enjoyed design, and I always had an interest in the aerospace industry, so some of the technical electives that I took involved a CATIA course, which is a 3D modeling course typically used for aerospace companies. I also took an advanced SOLIDWORKS course, which dove into more of the SOLIDWORKS functions and advanced design. And I also took a machining course where I had to learn how to code and operate CNC machines as well as weld. But it was completely up to us to choose our elected. So as long as it worked with your schedule and you were able to meet those requirements, then you could pick whatever courses you wanted. Again, be sure to check the description box below for more information about the course list at Cal State Fullerton, as well as the different engineering programs that they offer. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I just kind of want to talk about myself and my path during undergrad and now grad school, um, because you may be wondering as I'm talking about this, like, how are you qualified to talk about this? So kind of what I mentioned before, I did my bachelor's or my BS in mechanical engineering with a minor in physics from Cal State Fullerton. I got that in May of 2018 and I have been working in the industry for about two years now. Wait, oh, almost three years now. <laughs> I've been working in the industry for almost three years now. That's crazy. Oh my God. And right after I graduated college, I did take a job um, in the defense industry down in San Diego. I was there for about a year and then I transferred within the same kind of industry, same type of group, just to a different location. So that's kind of how I'm qualified. You know, I do have my bachelor's. Even during my bachelor's, I had different engineering internships, which kind of allowed me to really decide like where I wanted to go once I graduated. And then also I have almost three years. So crazy. I have almost three years of working experience within the defense industry. So that's kind of like my, how am I qualified? Another cool thing is that I'm starting a grad program. So I'll be getting a master of science or an MS in systems engineering with an emphasis in data analytics. Now, um, by the time this video is up, I will have already had my first day of school. So fingers crossed that it went well. And I'm just excited because, you know, I have been out of school for about two and a half years and going back to school, I don't think it's going to be a huge change, but you never know. And so I'm just excited to, you know, bring you guys along that journey with me and hopefully offer some insight, you know, as I'm figuring things out throughout this process. So to answer the title and the question about why I think more people should go into engineering, I think the big thing is that this industry offers so many avenues for your career. You could be like me, you could go into the defense industry. You could be like some of my friends who've gone into the medical device industry, who've gone into construction or architecture, as well as more R&D, which is research and development or manufacturing kind of industries. Alongside the typical like engineering role, I know people who've gotten their undergrad and then decided that they wanted to go be a doctor. I know people who've gotten their engineering degree and gone into law school. There is really like an infinite amount of possibilities for where you could go with an engineering degree. And that's why I feel like more people should go into it. Now when I first graduated I had this idea that I would be like using all of my engineering background and I'd be doing calculations and need all that but really when I graduated I was focused on design and I've been focused on design really that R&D research and development kind of role but now I'm doing more project management which really involves both my engineering background as well as these new skills that I'm learning. So you could go into engineering think that you know you want to go ahead and build and design circuit boards and then turn around and say you know there's a need for patents in this area I have an understanding of it I can really help people you know create patents do more of that law side and you could do that you have your engineering background you have that knowledge you want to go to law school and you do that for a few years you can always go back to being an engineer so I feel like there's just so many paths and so many career options within that and I remember during undergrad I went to this presentation and they had a um, a graphic basically of where you could go based off your different majors you know let's say like communication had this way and biology had like a few more now engineering covered a large amount of those and I thought that was just really great to see because a lot of people I feel like including myself went in thinking you know this is my niche this is what I'm gonna do and then really just saw like all these doors open and I just want to like share that with you guys because I don't think that's something that a lot of people know. But I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about what I've been talking about, please go ahead and comment below. I do like interacting with you guys and responding to comments and getting to know you guys a little bit more, as well as just sharing my knowledge and what I've gone through throughout my engineering career and school.
So if you made it this far and you're still curious about, well, I don't really know if engineering is right for you, I would really encourage you to just Google some things about engineering and about the careers and about what we do. So if you're interested in cars, go ahead and just research a little bit more about what an engineer does for a car company. Think about what type of role you would be interested in or what you want to learn more about. Like I've mentioned kind of throughout this video, there's so many different things that you can do with this degree and with this knowledge. So keep that in mind. You don't have to be in a certain niche. You don't have to be in a certain industry for that matter. So I really just want to stress that to you guys because if you research cars and you're like, you know what, I'm more interested in defense or I'm more interested in medical devices, research that, figure it out. Go ahead and you know leave comments. I'll try and find answers for you guys as best I can. Like I mentioned, a lot of my friends have gone into different industries. So I'd be willing to you know reach out to them and figure out the answers to the questions that you guys have. So I think that kind of wraps up our little couch session, why I think more people should go into engineering and is engineering right for you type of video. I hope you guys enjoy videos like this where I'm kind of sitting down and I have little things going on throughout the video because I feel like it's just you and I talking and hopefully I'm giving you guys insight and valuable information as you're kind of navigating your career choices and your decisions on school. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys for continuing to support my channel. I really appreciate your support and again, I enjoy interacting with you guys when you guys comment on my videos. If you haven't already, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2021. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you really, really like the videos, go ahead and hit that notification bell because I do post videos every single week. So thank you guys. I'll see you guys next week.